Hi everyone, my name's Alice from Discover AI, and in this video we're exploring another Power BI DAX pattern for Enviros. So this time having a look at some rainfall data to calculate long-term and moving averages. And we'll be exploring um, two pretty cool DAX functions, calculate, which is one of my favorite functions, um, and also dates in period. So let's take a step back and have a look at the scenario first. So let's imagine I'm an environmental engineer who's interested in analyzing trends in average daily rainfall for a local rainfall gauge. So while I know how to plot the daily rainfall, uh, there's a lot of noise in my time series and I wanna smooth out some of the noise by plotting monthly moving averages. And I also wanna know if rainfall is above or below a long -term, uh, the long-term daily average. So to provide a bit of context to see uh, whether we've got kind of high or low rainfall. Um, so for this exercise, we're going to have a look at the queen of the DAX functions, uh, calculate. Um, but before we do, let's take a quick look at what our data model looks like. Um, in this example, super simple data model. We've just got some climate data because we're dealing with only one rainfall gauge here um, and a date table with dates and year. So if we take a look um, back at our report, uh, we can get started um, by plotting a time series chart, just showing date. Here I've just got a, a line chart here. We wanna show date on the x-axis and we could just drag rainfall into the y-axis here. So here we're using an implicit measure. We haven't calculated any DAX measures um, for this at the moment. And if we have a look, we are just summing up our rainfall. Um, but first what we wanna do is we wanna start simple and we wanna um, actually compute a measure for our rainfall. And we're going to compute the average daily rainfall. Um, so this is a pretty simple aggregator function. Um, what we're going to do is insert a new measure into our climate data table by right clicking on the table and selecting new measure. And uh, then we're going to call this average daily rainfall. And our expression we're using is um, just the average function. So average, exactly like what it sounds like, it returns the average of all numbers in a column. So what we want to calculate an average for is uh, the rainfall data. So press enter. If we bring this measure into our visual here, we'll see we get exactly the same result as our implicit measure. So even though the implicit measure was calculating the sum, um, and now we've calculated an average, uh, because we are summing and averaging over our only one date, uh, this gives us the same results. So can be a little bit um, hard to understand conceptually. That's where using matrices um, to debug and review your DAX is really, really powerful. So here we've got a matrix visual. I'll just bring a uh, date in to my rows and then I'll drag my implicit measure in, my rain here as the values. We can see that it's um, just summing up all the values in the rainfall uh, column. And then I'm bringing in my measure here my average daily rainfall. Um, and we can see on a daily scale, we're getting exactly the same results, uh, which is what we would expect. An average of one day is the same as the sum of one day. Um, but you can see the values differ here when we have a look at the totals down the bottom. Uh, the rainfall is summing up all of the values, whereas average is just averaging up. And we can see this even more clearly if we bring a maybe year uh, in and create a bit of a hierarchy here. Here we can see the sum of the year compared to the uh, average daily rainfall across that year. Um, so what we wanna calculate next is uh, we wanna calculate the long-term average daily rainfall. Uh, so not just the average um, for, uh, for one day, we wanna know what is the um, average daily rainfall across all of our dates. And to do that, we can use a um, special function called calculate. So let's explore that. We're going to insert a new measure into our climate data table. So I've right clicked and select new measure and we'll call this long-term average daily rainfall. And calculate allows us to evaluate an expression in a context modified by filters. So the expression we want to calculate or evaluate, sorry, 
is our average daily rainfall. And we want to calculate this um, not just for the date that we are uh, kind of filtering for on the specific visual, but we want to clear that filter context and we want to calculate it across all dates. Um, so we can do that by uh, putting in the filter um, uh, argument uh, using a function called all. And all returns all the rows in a table or all the values in a column, uh, ignoring any filters that might have been applied. Um, so we can uh, clear uh, all of the filter across the entire uh, date table here. So if we close out the brackets, and let's bring that into our matrix and just have a look at uh, what this is computing. So if we drag this in here, uh, we can see that for every year and every uh, day of the year, we're returning exactly the same value, so 2.38. That is uh, the long-term average daily rainfall. So what we're doing there is we're removing the date uh, filter context that what we've got um, uh, we're removing the date context of each of these rows here um, and we are computing the average for all of the rows in the date table using the all function. So really what we're returning is um, the same value as the total down the bottom here. So that, uh, that's because we have no uh, date context at this total row. So let's see it in action in our visual. This is sometimes a little bit easier to understand when we can see it visually. So I'm going to drag in my long-term uh, daily rainfall and we'll get rid of our um, the sum of the rain here. And if we zoom in a little bit more here, we'll zoom right in, right on in. Uh, we can see that this is our, our long-term daily rainfall. So you can see that even though I have filtered my data from uh, 2014 to 2019, we're still getting that same long-term average daily rainfall that we computed across the entire uh, period. I think it was from 1880 uh, all the way up until 2019. And if we have a look at uh, our DAX calcs in the table view again in the matrices, we can see that our average uh, daily rainfall and long-term averages, uh, they're not equal anymore. And that is because with the long-term average here, uh, we're applying the filter um, for all of the dates. Um, whereas this average daily rainfall, um, this is being uh, filtered from the slicer down here. So it's only returning uh, the average at the total scale uh, for these years we've got filtered or these dates we have filtered. Um, if we wanted to calculate the long-term average daily rainfall uh, for what we've got selected, so I might just duplicate this measure here, insert a new measure, and we'll call this one long-term average daily uh, rainfall, maybe for current selection. Uh, we can use another function uh, here called all selected. Uh, so let's head on over to the online DAX um, documentation and we can have a look at what the all selected uh, function does. So if we have a look at this one, what it does is it removes the uh, filters from the columns and rows in the current query uh, while retaining all other context and filters. So what we're doing is we're removing the filter context for uh, the rows in the current visual here um, but we are keeping the context of the slicer. Um, so that's affecting it here. Uh, so if we bring this into our matrix, our long-term average uh, for the current selection, then we can see that this value and this value, these match, um, whereas this is computed for the entire data set. So that's a little bit of an overview of calculating long-term averages. Um, but what if we wanted to calculate something a bit more complex, like a moving average? Uh, this is where we can use calculate again, um, but combine it with a different filter context. So this time what we want to do is calculate our average daily rainfall for a specific um, date period. 
So let's insert a new measure. And we'll call this monthly moving average. And we're going to use uh, the function calculate, uh, which again, it calculates an expression in a context modified by filters. So our expression that we want to calculate is our average daily rainfall. And uh, the kind of filters we want to apply on it is um, we want to use another function called dates in period. And dates in period returns the dates uh, from the given period. So uh, we need to provide uh, the dates. So it's a date column of our date table. Um, we want to know what is the start date. So we're going to use a function called last date, which returns the last non-blank date. And what this does is it returns the last uh, date of um, whatever context you've got currently uh, in the visual. So we'll explore that when we have a look at the matrix. And the number of intervals um, that we want to assess. So we want to go back one month. Um, so I'm going to do negative one. And the interval, we could choose a day, month, quarter, year. Um, I'm going to choose month. And press enter. Um, so if we bring this into our visual first, let's have a look at what, what the um, calculation looks like. So you can see here that it's a lot smoother than our daily rainfall. It really does take a lot of the noise out of it. Um, and what we're doing here is if I hover over this, this uh, value here on the 3rd of uh, May 2017, uh, that last non-date um, will be taking, uh, will be returning the date the 3rd of May 2017. And then it's uh, calculating our average across the interval one month prior. Um, so that's how it calculates the uh, monthly moving average. So let's have a look at this um, just in our visual, uh, in our matrix here. So we'll create a little bit of room, bring this in. And let's have a look. I might move it up to uh, just next to my average here. And if we have a look at this, um, we can compare what the averages are against uh, kind of like the monthly moving average. And you can see at a, at a daily level, it is like a little bit hard to um, kind of add up all of this in your head and kind of think, oh, what is the average? Um, and this is where having a month column in your date table could be really handy. So we can go ahead and insert a new column in our date table uh, using DAX. Uh, this time I'm going to insert a new column instead of a measure. And the column I want to insert is um, month. I might call it month text. And I'm going to use a function called format uh, to format my date from my date table um, into a three, uh, into the first three letters of our month name. So if we've got this, we could drag this in so we can go year, month, uh, date. Uh, but you'll see that what's happened here is the months are presented in alphabetical order instead of um, sequential order as we would expect. So this isn't super useful. Uh, with any um, text fields in Power BI, it's always really important to assign a sort order to it. Um, so we can insert another column. I'll insert a new column here and we'll just call this one month. And we can use the month function to return the number. So 1 to 12 for the months based on the date column here. And then we can use this, uh, this column uh, to sort uh, our month text. So I've selected my month text. I can click up here um, on the sort uh, icon. And I want to sort that column by my month. And then these should be uh, sorted now in uh, sequential months. Um, and we can see that our uh, average daily and our uh, monthly moving averages, these match up exactly here. Um, that's a really good uh, check. 
uh, because at the month scale, we would expect uh, the average across the month compared to the average kind of moving um, to be exactly the same. But when we have a look down at the daily scale, this is where the numbers are different. Um, so this is where, say, on the 4th of um, uh, November, uh, it's calculating um, for that date uh, the month uh, prior. So we'll calculate all up until uh, from, uh, say, the 4th of October onwards. So that's moving averages. Um, but what if we want to make our moving average slightly more dynamic? Here we've, um, we're just calculating it for one month. But what if I want to calculate it for two months or three months or six months? Um, we could easily copy and paste and write lots more measures um, here uh, and bring those into the visuals. Uh, but what if we want it to be a little bit more dynamic? That's where the what if parameters um, really come in handy and they allow us to, um, to make our formulas very dynamic. So let's go ahead and have a look at those. What we want to do is um, up in the modeling tab here, we want to select a new parameter and we want to select a numeric range. And uh, the name of uh, my parameter, I'll call it um, maybe moving average uh, months. I want this to be a whole number and I want it just to be a number between one and 12. Um, with an increment of one, and my default will be uh, one. So if I uh, click create, what this does is it creates us um, a couple of kind of DAX assets here. Uh, we've created a calculated uh, table here with one column uh, using this function generate series, which uh, creates a, a series if we have a look at the data here, uh, just from 1 to 12 with increments of 1. Uh, we also have a new DAX measure, which returns a selected value of this slicer here. Um, so the selected value of whatever we've selected uh, from that column. So at the moment, this isn't doing anything. We can edit um, the slicer here and nothing happens. Um, if we ever look at our data model, that's because uh, this table here is disconnected. It's got no relationship to any of our data. Uh, but what we can do is we can connect it up to our data uh, using a little bit of DAX. So uh, what we can do here, if we um, uh, have a look at our monthly moving average value, um, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to insert a new measure and we'll create a new measure uh, to be the dynamic moving average. And here, instead of hard coding in negative one month, uh, we can times uh, negative one by whatever our moving average uh, month's value is that we've selected. I'm just going to get rid of the table reference name here uh, because best practice is when you're referencing measures in DAX um, to not include the table reference name. And press enter. So now if we bring in our dynamic uh, monthly moving average into the chart here, um, you can see that this line, it can um, it will smooth out if we select uh, a wider month uh, range. Here we're calculating a 10 month moving average. Um, and then it will return exactly the same as what we previously calculated if we set it to one as well. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do having a look at uh, averages in Power BI. Um, today we've just focused on having a look at uh, long-term average and moving averages uh, to have a look at trends in rainfall data. Uh, but there's a ton of other uh, different scenarios that you can look to analyze. If you're keen to learn more about how you can visualize your environmental data in Power BI, then be sure to sign up for our Power BI for Enviro's monthly meetup group, uh, keep following along on our blog and YouTube channel or reach out to one of the team at Discover AI to learn more about our training and consulting packages. So thanks so much for watching and have fun playing around with DAX in Power BI.